In August, this woman just wanted to have a quiet dinner when a mob of protesters in Washington, D.C. surrounded her table and yelled in her face. If you think that the left is done with the violence that we saw from 2016 to 2020, you are highly mistaken. And if we are not vigilant and we, if we are not prepared, we can be the victims of the left. How's everybody doing today? My name is Ty with Rod IQ. Thank you for joining me today. And I wanted to bring in this new year with changing our mindset, how we look at the world around us. And we have to be honest, there is a lot of violence. There's been a lot of violence from 2016 all the way up to 2020 when Joe Biden got elected. All of a sudden, all the BLM and Antifa disappeared. Or did they? See, that's where the problem lies. They haven't disappeared. They have just gone into hiding. But as soon as the right starts winning and winning and winning and winning some more, you are going to find that the left is going to come out and they are going to come out with a rage that we have not seen before. And we, as conservatives, as family men, as men, we have got to be ready for this because I do not believe that we were ready for this last time. And a lot of times we just kind of closed our eyes to the situation and a lot of us became victims during that process. And so what I want to talk about today is being vigilant, understanding your surroundings and understanding that the person that's standing next to you, even though you may have the, the best intentions of the world, they may not. And so you have to be ready for that at all times. And so kind of what I want to talk about today is not just preparing yourself, but preparing your family also. Because you cannot be, as a man, you cannot be everywhere at once. You don't go with your wife grocery shopping every time she goes. When she goes clothes shopping for the kids, you're not there a lot of times. We're busy guys. We have other things that we need to be doing also. So we cannot be with our family 24-7. And so bad things happen to good people every day. And so when you look at the, your surroundings, you have to understand that not everybody cares whether you go home safely. Let's just be honest. A lot of the left is selfish and they could care less about you or your family as long as they get what they want. In one way or another, you've seen the looting, you've seen the violence, and ever since the judges started letting people out of prison, out of jail... Uh, the bail reform that they've been uh, working on. I live over here in California and the violence is, is the uptick is, is very noticeable. And with them opening up the borders, you're going to see a lot more violence. And I'm not saying that everybody that comes over that border is going to be violent. But what I'm saying is we don't know who the hell is crossing our border. And you should never assume that the people that are coming over here have good intentions. A lot of them don't. Let's just face it. But let me go ahead and move on from there. See, there is a huge uptick in violence, like I had mentioned. And the only way to combat that is to know your surroundings. Never assume that it can't happen to you. Take a look at this. In this video from Monday morning released by police, you can see three of the suspects jump out of the Honda as the fourth acts as a getaway driver. Cops say here they're about to rob a 36-year-old man on Quimby Avenue. One flashed a knife as the other stole a phone and wallet. And as they sprint back to their Honda, they rob a couple, a 32-year-old woman and a 48-year-old man pummeled. They had debit cards and $1,000 cash stolen. You see, I understand that nobody chooses to be a victim. But there's certain things that you can do in your everyday life to ensure that those, the chances of you becoming a victim drop significantly. For instance, when I go into a restaurant, I look for all of the in entrances and all of the exits. I sit by the farthest exit, the one that's locked, the one that nobody can walk into, but I can get out of. I'm scanning the restaurant to see who might be a threat and who might not. When I sit down, I'm facing the crowd so that if anything, anything pops off and if anybody comes in, 
I can see that. I can monitor that. Also, when I'm walking into a store, I don't let people walk behind me if I think that they're shady. If I think that they're shady, I'll let them pass. I'll pull over, pretend that I'm looking at something, let them pass, and now I can monitor them. I'll say hi to people, not just because I'm a nice guy, and I am, but when I say hi to people, it gives me the ability to gauge their reaction, how they're responding to me. Are they mad dogging me? Are they dressing me down? I can monitor all of that. You see, safety is a frame of mind. And I can never guarantee you that you're not going to be a victim. But there are certain things that you can do on a daily basis that will minimize that. Let me show you this. Watch this surveillance video from the Sitco gas station in the 200 block of Northwestern Avenue. At around 1 o'clock this morning, a dark vehicle hems in a car parked between the pumps. Then the victim is surrounded by three people. One assailant goes to the driver's side, another to the passenger side, and a gunman in gray sweats comes out with his weapon extended. We've stopped the video before shots are fired. Now, that guy got shot a couple of times, and he, he survived. He had minor injuries from the, from the gunshot wounds. But what could he have done differently? First of all, he's parked in an empty gas station with the doors unlocked, the motor turned off, and he allows those people to get out of the vehicle and start w walking towards them. What he possibly could have done was if the vehicle was, was running, he could have thrown that vehicle into reverse and gotten the hell out of there. But why would you pull into an empty gas station in the first place where you have lights shining right over the top of you, you have a spotlight on you. You are attracting attention to yourself. If you have to park and there's something that you have to do, because he wasn't getting gas, if you have to park and there's something that you have to do, go to a grocery store where there could where there could be a lot more people there. Criminals are criminals of opportunity. If you give them an opportunity, they will take it. If you do not give them the opportunity, they will not take it. It's as simple as that. But being vigilant isn't just for you. It's for your family members too. Your wife, your daughter, your young son. You can't be everywhere at once. And so you have to teach them to be vigilant too. Because if not, bad things can happen to them. And if you are not preparing them for bad things that could happen, they can be victims and you can be helpless. Detectives with LAPD Southwest Division say this video shows a suspect shortly after he attempted to rape a woman in South LA back in June. The victim was using public transit and exited near Crenshaw and Exposition. We do believe on our case with our victim that he was on the metro and that he did follow her from there. She walked a few blocks when she had a suspicion she was being followed. She turns around, the suspect attempt, pretends to tie a shoe. She, she gets a little nervous. She crosses over on the street. Next thing she knew, she heard footsteps running um, after her. And she, was, she turned around and the suspect tackled her, took her into the bushes. It's a brazen home invasion. Two armed men burst into a house in Pasadena, Texas. Three victims are ordered to the floor. Then one suspect lifts one young lady by her hair and orders her to another part of the house. Yeah, yeah. Oh. As the terrifying invasion unfolds, the parents, who are out for the evening, watch in horror on their Ring camera cell phone app. Hey, who's in my house? I got you on camera. The cops are on the way. The cops are on their way. My neighbors, my neighbors are there. They're, they're calling the cops right now. Y'all better get out of my house. Y'all better get out of my house now. Wow, those kids must have been terrified. And the, and the parents, they must have felt helpless. But what could the parents have done? to help ensure that this situation didn't happen. There's no guarantees in life, right? It doesn't matter what you teach your, your children. It doesn't matter, you know, what type of weapons they have available to them. But what I can tell you is if, if you don't do anything, it's a 100% it's a guarantee that you will be a victim. Now, what could those parents have maybe taught those children? Well, I'll start with this. I don't know if they opened the door for those, for those uh, men or not. If they open the door, that's the first thing that they did wrong. They have the ring up. 
They could have checked their phones before they opened that door to ensure that they knew who was at that door before they opened it. They could have done that. Okay, but with that being said, do they have any self, have they taken any self defense classes? My daughter's in jujitsu right now. I do not want my daughter to be a victim because I understand that I cannot be there twenty four seven. And even after she turns eighteen and goes out on her own, she's going to find herself in situations where she may need to use the skills that she's learned. So teaching them self defense, jujitsu, krav maga, kickboxing, boxing. Teach them something. They have to be able to defend themselves. Okay? And one more thing. Are there any guns in the house? Have you taught your children how to use your guns and be confident with their ability to use them safely? Have you done that? If you haven't, you should think about that. You should do that. I know it's a scary thing to have your kids holding something that is so powerful that, that an accident could happen at any time. But what is more dangerous? What is more dangerous? Having your kids be the victim or having your kids being able to save themselves when you're not there? That's what's important to me. See, in my house, we have weapons all over the house. It's not that I'm... It's not that I am like, uh, you know, you know, uh, some gun crazy person, you know, white supremacist. It's not that at all. It has nothing to do with that. But I'm a deeper sleeper than my wife. So guess what? My wife has a very big knife on her side of the bed and a bat. I have a gun on my side. It gets locked away in the daytime and it's out there and available for me to use at night. Okay. My daughter, she has a bat in her room. But nothing that we ever do can ever prepare us for things that we don't see coming. That is why you always have to be prepared for what you think might not be coming. It's important. And if you go your whole life and never become a victim, and but you've learned all this stuff, it's not a waste. Because the, the one time you need it, it will be there for you. I don't leave the house without a knife. A pocket knife. Because if I've been in fights with multiple guys at the same time, and luckily for me, I've ended up on top of that situation, but I understood that it very well could have went the other way. But the knife, just having a knife in your pocket, can equalize that situation very quickly. Now, I am not an advocate for violence. I am not saying go out there and cause trouble. What I am saying is if you don't want to be a victim, you should not act like a victim. You should not do what victims do. With that being said, thank you guys all for watching. Hopefully, I have opened up some eyes because bad things are going to happen. And are you going to be ready for them? That's the question. That's the key. Are you going to be ready? Are you going to be vigilant? Are you going to be ready for whatever comes your way? Are you teaching your family what is needed to make sure that they don't become victims also? It's very important, especially in this day and age, when there is so much violence happening around us, and it's only going to get worse. When the, uh, when the conservatives start getting some bigger wins, and they become more frequent, happening more often, the left, they are not going to know what to do. The only thing that they have in their corner is BLM and Antifa and the people that they've let out of prison. So you have got to be ready for them. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. For me, this has been a very important video because I take this stuff very personally and very seriously. I don't see, I don't see bad guys over around every corner, but I'm ready for them when they're there. And that's the difference between being a victim and not being a victim. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you spending some time with me today. And I hopefully in these next year or two, you can avoid being a victim yourself. Because 2023 is going to be a very crazy year, I'm assuming. We will, only time will tell. But I'm ready for it as much as I possibly can be. And I will do everything in my power to make sure that me, my family, and my friends are safe because that's what real men do. I will see you on the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. Ride IQ is a new channel, so please like, subscribe, and share this video with all of your friends because we have to support each other if we're going to win this battle. And if you agree or disagree, please leave your comments below so that we can have that discussion together. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.